everybody. Welcome back to Santa Clara. We are live from the AWS Summit here, and we are here to talk about some awesome new feature that is launching and uh, give you a little bit of an overview of something that launched last year at reInvent. So I'm Brandon West. I head up the evangelism team for the Americas region, and I've got two awesome guests on stage with me. Uh, introduce yourselves. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm Smita Sriram. I'm the product manager for the uh, service that we're going to talk about, SFTP, and I'm excited to be here awesome. today. And I'm Alejandra, and I'm one of the Dev Evangelists under Brandon, too. Cool. So let's, let's give a little bit of background. So we're going to talk today about transfer for SFTP. Mm -hmm. uh, launched at reInvent. Right. So what is AWS transfer for SFTP? Uh, you know, SFTP, to a lot of people, seems like something that's kind of old, old school, maybe. Uh, I remember... Yeah trading MP3s on FTP servers mm -hmm. in the early 2000s. I'm pretty right. sure the statute of limitations is passed, so I can <laughs> right. say that. Um, but yeah, let's, wh why did we build this thing? Yeah, so interestingly, like as you mentioned, SFTP, the protocol has been around for a while, and what we realized is it's still widely used like across like cu our customers, like you know, uh, from many industries, whether it's pharmaceutical, medical, financial, the telecom, you know, and it's and what we realized was, um, you know, customers are managing, hosting, doing all of this on their own, and so do you know we built this fully managed service and launched it at reInvent last year called Transfer for SFTP, right? So that now customers don't have to do anything. It's it's pretty easy to go set up a server and then have your users set up your users so that then now you can continue to use SFTP, but now all that data is in the cloud, is in AWS. So. Cool, and believe it or not, there, there might be a couple people tuning in on Twitch that don't really know what we're talking about when we say yeah. SFTP what or FTP it? in general. Yeah, so so let, let's let's talk, What what is file transfer protocol? What is right. uh, SSH file transfer protocol? Yeah. What are those things? Yeah. So SFTP, is, it is a file protocol, right? So it's a secure protocol where your data, when it goes over the internet, goes through the secure encrypted tunnel. Um, and, uh, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's different from FTP, which is, you know, sometimes people confuse it, is it the same as FTP, FTPS? No, it's completely different. It's a different protocol. And then data, let's say in S3, is an object. So you're receiving the data, sending it as a file, and people typically use clients that speak that same language uh, and send it over the wire. And then when we store it in AWS, we store it in S3 as an object. So that's kind of how SFTP works uh, today. You know. Yeah. So it's it's built on top of SSH. So Correct. people familiar with SSH probably already know what SFTP is, but right. it's an extension of that protocol. Yeah. Uh, so and uses the same encryption. Uh, you know. Yeah. And and there. so this would be if you needed to do more file operations than just copy files, where you would use something like. SCP, you yeah. would use SFTP. Yeah, exactly. You want to do a quick LS, you want to do puts, gets, so it gives you all that functionality. Yeah. So, so you're saying that SFTP is still relevant, it's still a thing? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and it's still used for transfers. Uh, we see, uh, we've seen a lot of use cases, like I said, uh, where customers want to receive data, send data, and you know, this is what this enables oh. easily. Cool. I like easy. So why wouldn't you want to manage your own SFTP server? What are some of the reasons that you wouldn't want to just put a, put an agent on your EC2 instance and run it that way? Um, it sounds easy at the get-go, right? Why not just spin up an SFTP server? But there's a lot more that customers would need to do, whether it's on-prem or in EC2, right? It's a matter of, um, you know, first of all, hosting the infrastructure for that server, uh, you know, managing it, monitoring it, um, and then, you know, constantly worrying about patching servers. So there's a lot of management overhead that we want our customers to get away from, right? Yeah. And, and that's kind of what this service does is there's no, they get a virtual server in AWS that they don't need to worry about anymore, about doing all of that, um, you know, heavy lifting, what they call it. Yeah. So that's kind of why customers told us is they're more than happy to not do that anymore. Yeah, and it's, know? As a developer, I always love to be able to offload some of the hard parts, like mm -hmm. thinking about security yeah. to sure. someone else, because yeah. it's a, you know, I want to focus on the code. I want to focus exactly. on moving moving the objects around that help me do my job. It's yeah. not really about worrying about security. Yeah. So before we talk about the new launch, right. let's talk about some of the security integrations that make using this service awesome. How, yeah. how can it plug into like my Active Directory or something like that? Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, so you have. Customers can do so. Before I get like, when I was talking about the heavy lifting, what I also want to say is to, to your point of the code was now they, with the data now in AWS, now they can focus more on using other AWS technologies to analyze the data, get more value out of it. So there's that time spent, you know, doing server management now that can be shifted to doing more fun stuff. You yeah. know. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, in the service, we have two ways that customers can set up their authentication. Right, the one is where you know they can set it up, store all the identities within the service, like mm -hmm. username, keys, like you mentioned SSH. Mm -hmm. So SSH comes with keys, yep. right? And the other one is where they can plug in like an existing data store that they're using for storing all these identities. And that's where AD comes in, right? Like a lot of our customers use Microsoft AD or even a third party like Okta or One Login. And we've given them a, a way that they could integrate that so that they can keep those identities where they are and then in real time, we'll use that to authenticate their end users. And how does it work with a custom identity provider? Would it be a little bit different? How similar is that? Be. Yeah, because we don't store that in our service, so we, we give them a way that they can plug in like an API gateway endpoint, mm -hmm. and what that does is it goes and searches their data store, right? Mm -hmm. To say, okay, a user came in, logged in, and it's going to go look up saying, um, is that user in my database? Mm -hmm. It is? Go. So that's kind of how it works in real time. They don't. They don't need to port over everything and bring it into the service. It stays where it is, and then we go query using um, an endpoint that they provide. That's cool. <laughs> so let's talk about the new thing. Yeah. What 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 launched? So today we launched um, support for private link, right? Um, and what that means, I can go a little bit. So before this launch, when customers created a server, they got an endpoint that was public facing, right, mm -hmm. over the internet. Right? Um, now, when they create the same server, they get a choice. Do you want it to be public facing, or do you want it to come and surface up within your VPC? And that's kind of what we just launched, and that's powered by Private Link. Great, so if you're watching on Twitch and you're like, what the heck is a VPC? Yeah. It's, it's basically your virtual network. It's where right. you can define your access control lists, you can yeah. add security gateways, NAT gateways, and anything that used to be a real piece of hardware that you'd have to crawl around a data center to install, right. it's in your VPC All virtualized. Virtual. Right, yeah. exactly. Cool. Yeah. So what's uh, what's the big benefit of, of enabling SFTP over private link? Yeah, so as you mentioned, right, VPCs, you know, customers get this their own little, you know, uh, private cloud, you know, cloud within AWS. They also get security groups, and what they can do is they can set rules on who can access the endpoint, who cannot, so they get more control uh, with, with the endpoint now in their VPC, right? One of the main things is, first thing at the get-go, is um, if they have transfers that's happening in applications that's just running inside their VPC, uh, now they, that, that you know, traffic doesn't need to traverse the internet, right? So like, going back to private link a little bit, the big benefit of it is, um, you know, your traffic stays within the AWS network, right? Yeah. That's kind of the primary on private link. So similarly, applying it to SFTP, when I, um, do a transfer within my VPC, it directly connects to the server. None of, none of that traffic goes over the internet, so that keeps it secure, like the customers who have only in VPC transfers. Um, the second thing is they might have applications in their on-prem data centers, right, and they want to SFTP that into their bucket. So they can now use this so that, again, you know, they connect over Direct Connect or VPN, and again, nothing traverses over the internet. It goes directly to the service and then into their um, Amazon S3 bucket. So that's kind of the big benefit that traffic all stays within the network or the customer's VPC. Yeah, and one of the things that I think is really cool about this is that moving your data into S3, as you alluded to earlier, right. opens up tons and tons of possibilities on things you can then do with exactly. that data, right? Exactly. Once you have those objects, you can hook it up to all kinds of things. You can you could query it with Athena, yep. you could move it to somewhere else, uh, trigger events, all, yep. all sorts of that fun stuff. So I think this is a really cool way to take existing data that you might have locked up in a legacy application somewhere and get it to a point where now you can do all this shiny new cool stuff. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I, I can talk about like an example customer, what they're doing with it. Yeah. Right? Um, it's pretty exciting because they, um, it's, the customer's name is Belong, so they, um, they're a sub, you know, they are a subsidiary of Telstra, which is a huge telecom company in Australia. Mm. Um, so what they have is they receive these things called mobile call detail records, <laughs> right? It's just calls, information on, you know, mobile calls uh -huh. from different providers, right? And they get about five to 20 megabytes every few seconds, like throughout the day, SFTP, right? Wow. So with AWS SFTP, now because, you know, they don't have to worry about the scaling, all of that stuff, comes into the service, and then it's in their S3 bucket, and now they can do real-time analysis on this data, right? And then, you know, make tuning at, right as it's happening. So it's <laughs> kind of, they build this whole real-time ingestion framework around, you know, AWS SFTP. It gives them that, you know, I can use the service, I can act on my data right away, yeah. right? Cool. <laughs> well, I think 
you're going to walk us through some of some yeah. of how this works a little yeah. bit. You got a quick demo for us, yeah, right? Sure. Awesome. Yeah, I am. You want a demo? I would love a yeah, demo. I'm let's take it. Yeah, I want a demo. I yeah. can't wait. All right, let's do it. Stop me. <laughs> She's about to wow you all. <laughs> A second there. <laughs> yeah, I, I used to. Uh, I used. I, I hopefully won't get in trouble. This was like 15 years ago. But I, I used to run FTP server on a pretty popular, widely trafficked forum. That was specifically for heavy metal music because I was yeah. a radio oh. DJ <laughs> wow. for, a, for a metal show. So you I would get all the new DJ? releases right. before they were released, and then I would rip them awesome. and share them with the internet on my FTP server. And SFTP Kids, was. don't do that. Don't yeah, do that. Not anymore. Follow the rules. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I know. That's a good use case right there. Right? <laughs> we should just end it on that. <laughs> um, so. What I'm about to show you is what, you know, it's more related to what we launched today. Like okay. I mentioned, the private link technology. Mm -hmm. um, what you'll see is, so when you come to our console, right, when you go services, you look for, we call our service AWS Transfer for SFTP, right here. Give me a second. So I've got a few servers created for myself, right? Yep. Um, the one server I have is when we, you know, remember I just said public, like yep. the one that you can create a public facing endpoint. And then I have a few VPC servers right here. Mm -hmm. So when I click on this, you'll see that it takes me, it tells me my endpoint ID. So it's using a private endpoint. It's not, a, you know, using our public endpoint right there. Um, and then I'm just going to quickly go to my VPC console and you can see this is the endpoint, right? And you can see that it's kind of tightly bound. It, it doesn't have any public IP addresses. It's all within my VPC. Um, now for my demo setup, I just want to show you how I'm kind of set, how I've set it up, just to give you that the fact that it is within the network, you know, the VPC, it's not going outside over the network. That's yep. kind of what I want to show you really quickly. Um, for that, I'm going to go over to the EC2 console and I'm show you. And EC2 is our compute resources, right? That we use for compute. That'll be good for folks who are not familiar with that name. Yeah. So I've got two running instances. Again, it's virtual, right? Mm -hmm. Um, the one I have is I have a, an instance that only can speak to my computer, mm -hmm. right? It does, it's not over the network. Okay. Um, and then this is the one, the instance that only, it doesn't even have a public IP. means that the internet can't talk to it, right? It only has a private IP. And this is the one that's going to use the endpoint, uh, the VPC endpoint that I created to SFTP files, to SFTP his files, the files, those music files. <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding>. um, <laughs> Cool. So if I come back to this window right here, so if I see, so I'm going to go, now I'm going to go, if you saw this host, I'm going to go right, this is my bastion host, I call it, because that's what I'm going to use to get to my private endpoint, okay. right? So I'm going to go here. Yep, yeah, so I'm in. So I'm in my bastion host. Yep. And now I'm going to go into my private instance that cannot speak to the internet right here. So if I do this, let me see if I do ping Amazon.com, right? It doesn't see that data. Like if you see on a regular instance, if I do ping Amazon.com, even this doesn't see, but you'll see if you do ping Amazon.com, you kind of know you can speak to the internet, but the fact that this doesn't speak to the internet, it doesn't know what's Amazon.com. Um, so now, I'm, if I go back to my SFTP server really quickly, um, I have one user, right? Um, now, the way SFTP works, it's all you know, user IAM roles driven, right? Um, access, even though it's the protocol, it's a file protocol. Access is all driven via IAM, right? That's what determines what the what your users can do, cannot do, what they can see in your bucket, cannot see. So it's all driven by an IAM role that I have set up here for the demo. So now I'm going to quickly. Can you uh, can you zoom in on that a little bit? We've had some requests uh, oh. from the audience, or increase the text size, maybe. You know mm. what? I don't know why. Command plus, or well, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> We're working on it. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. Or? Is that better? Yeah, I think that's a little better. I can keep going. Can, can you see what you're doing? That's the most important thing. Yeah, I can see, but. <laughs> I, I, I think that's great. That's good. Is that good? It's yeah, yeah, Twitch yeah. says right. it's much better. Thank, Thank you for you. letting me know. <laughs> the um, public has spoken. Yeah. So just give me a second here. I'm just going to 
to use my private key. So I have a private key here, so I'm going to do SFTP minus I. Take my key there. That's what you need to pass in key, SSH driven. Mm -hmm. right? So I have Smitha, that's my login. And now this is the interesting part because I'm going to go to my VPC console, I'll go to my the private endpoint, the VPC mm -hmm. endpoint that I created, and I'm going to take my endpoints. I'm going to take my endpoints. It's very specific IP. Now you can set up DNS names, private DNS names within your VPC, so you don't have to use this long name, right? You can use use a shorter name and then log in and if you see I'm in nice Woo. yeah we're in so I'm actually talking from a really private instance that really this instance can't speak to the internet but you can do SFTP to your AWS uh, SFTP server <laughs> cool so I think we've got a few minutes left here yeah and we had one question come in from the twitch audience sure. uh, I don't I don't have the, the twitch username so forgive me but uh, is there a way to expose uploading the server host key? When you start stop SFTP, the host key changes, which freaks out certain workloads that check the host key for authentication. Yeah. Is there a way that we help solve that problem that you know of? <laughs> um, so today, yeah, so there, you know, we'd have to understand why are you stopping your server? Let's find out. Like, okay. What are you doing to stop it? Yes, today we do the host key. We don't guarantee that the host key will stay the same when okay. you stop it. So, so there is no way right now. Still a potential we'll thing to look out for. Yeah. Okay. Thank cool. You. All right. So let's talk about customers. Mm -hmm. I, I know you, you mentioned one earlier, but yeah. what what are some customers using the service today, and why did they decide to use SFTP? Right. So the other, so as I mentioned, yes, I did mention Belong. Uh, that was a nice example. The other one I'm excited to also talk about is Finra. Right. They. Uh, they are the watchdog, you can say, or a regulatory uh, body for the financial industry, right? So they protect investors' uh, interests, right? That's kind of right. what their you know, broader role is. And they use SFTP a lot, right? Uh, to receive uh, data from investors or share it with, share, you know, they've got a lot of SFTP going on. And they were really, really happy to get off of this whole heavy lifting that I mentioned of managing servers at such scale and use the service, mm -hmm. right? And now the data lands into S3 and then they have plans to make AWS like their data lake that you call. Yes. And data lake is where you get your data in the rawest format and then you can use it for all sorts of analysis. You don't need to worry about space and you know you use all the AWS services like you mentioned. So that's a, a great example I'm always excited to talk about. Here. Yeah, that's that's super cool. And I, I yeah. think the the growth of data lakes recently is something that's really intriguing to me because it, it just when I started off in software development, it wasn't a thing that existed. Right. Uh, you know, there were data warehouses, but a data lake is like aggregate unstructured data. Right. It's a little bit different. So it's really, really cool that we now have such an expansive tool set that we can just leave our data unstructured and yeah. still get tons of value out of right. it. Right. You I don't have to it. worry about the space limits or anything. You yeah. Know. <laughs> so. Awesome. So, winding up. Where can the viewers and customers out there in the internet go to learn more about this? Yeah, uh, I would start off from our website, right? Uh, SFTP, right off of the Amazon website, you do a slash, you go to SFTP. There's tons of information, use cases on where this would be applicable in your environment. Um, and the other thing, just try it out. You can create a server within a matter of few minutes, right? That's the other thing, go to the console like I did. Uh, just search, put SFTP in the search, you'll see the service. Um, and follow our docs, and you know, got a server in AWS for you. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us here. Yeah. Uh, it's always awesome to, to stream on Twitch, and this is this is your second time on the Launchpad now. So we're gonna keep inviting you back because you're too good at it. <laughs> oh, so thanks. sorry, so sorry, but you're volunteering now. <laughs> yeah. Thank uh, you. You always cool. come so well prepared. Oh, no. Yeah. So <laughs> it'll be SFTP again. <laughs> yeah. So well, I'm, I'm sure there's all sorts of really cool things yeah. planned on the product roadmap that yeah. we can't talk about right now. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, but stay tuned, and uh, we've got more awesome content coming to you live here from AWS Summit Santa Clara. And uh, Alejandra, Smitha, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasure streaming with you. Bye, everyone. Bye.